है एवरी वन अ वेरी हैप्पी इंडिपेंडेंस डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू आजादी के 75 फाइव ईयर्स हो चुके हैं और उस, उसकी आप सभी को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं ऑन दैट नोट इट विल बी अ रियली गुड इनिशिएटिव ऑन योर पार्ट टू स्टार्ट योर डे विद प्रोडक्टिव एक्टिविटी एंड दिस इज इन लाइन विद दैट ओनली सो लेट्स नो वॉट आर दी करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ टूडे दैट यू नीड टू नो फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव बिकॉज इंडिपेंडेंस डे इज एट इट्स प्लेस बट डोंट फोगेट यू हैव योर एग्जामिनेशन कमिंग अप ऑन सेप्टेम्बर सेवन सो वी कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू मिस इवन अ सिंगल डे सो लेट्स बिगिन द करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ टूडे बट बिफोर दैट आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ दिस टाइम टेबल फॉर द लाइफ क्लासेस फॉर आर एस एवी एंड नबार्ड एंड ऑल्सो ऑफ द क्रैश कोर्स फॉर नबार्ड This is our mobile application. In case if you haven't downloaded it yet, guys, do download it because it makes the entire process of scrolling through the uh, course or getting your live lectures very, very handy for all of you. Okay, so let's begin with the first question. I know it's a holiday, therefore I'm not going to waste much of your time. Quickly, I will wind up this session. But you have to stay attentive during the session and try to give the answers of the questions that I ask you. during the session okay so here the very first question is recently delhi's uh, rajiv gandhi cancer institute has got the first indigenously developed surgical robotic system what is the name of the robot or the robotic system so you have the five options out of which mantra guys is the right answer so the complete name is ss mantra now ss is the name of the company ss innovations which has developed this uh, robotic mantra system robotic surgical system next question is what is the name of isro's first ever virtual space museum so you have the five options out of which option a spark is the right answer now we all know that everything is going on the virtual world everything is going on the metaverse so this is in line with that only isro has launched its virtual space museum where uh you will get to know the experience of space and everything you want to know about the space and its roots activities on this platform by sitting in the comfort of your homes apart from this isro has done one more thing and that is the testing of this low altitude escape motor now this is basically a part of your gaganyaan mission and this capsule like uh, motor is going to help the astronauts escape in case the gaganyaan mission fails or any untoward activity happens in the space when they go into the space in the gaganyaan mission so that is the basic idea of this low altitude escape motor of the crew escape mission so uh, crew escape system is one system and the testing of its motor has been done by isro so that is the basic news and the testing was done uh, from the shri harikota a uh, launch center in andhra pradesh how many missile launch centers and which missile launch launch center do we have in india do tell me in comment section below moving ahead i have already told you the purpose of this crew escape system how many municipal corporations have been selected in the smile support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprise scheme so i hope all of you are aware of this smile scheme even if you don't know or don't remember the exact uh, exact details of the scheme but you still have an idea of the scheme that is for the rehabilitation of the beggars uh, of the marginalized people majorly the focus was on the beggars to stop the activity of begging across the uh, nation so here 75 municipal corporations have been selected and clearly the number is in sync with the 75 years of indian independence so this is the scheme for the rehabilitation of the marginalized individuals to give them the livelihood to include them into the government social welfare schemes and many more things so let's have a look at the activities which these municipal corporations would undertake to rehabilitate the beggars so they are going to provide them with the medical facilities counseling will be done awareness among them will be created education will be provided skill development will be given economic linkages will be ensured conversions with the government welfare programs will be done so that their overall uh, rehabilitation and development can be ensured the scheme 
has the budget of rupees 100 crores and it is valid till 2025 to 26. So that is the entire scheme all about. Next question is in which of the following schemes has the Ministry of Finance barred the income tax payers from participating? So as you can see in the options, all of them are the pension schemes. And if the taxpayers are not allowed to contribute in the pension scheme, then who would do that? Taxpayers usually do the pension scheme or the salary earned pe salaried people save a portion of their salary for their future. But here what we are seeing that the Ministry of Finance has barred the income taxpayers from entering into a scheme. So what is it exactly? First of all, know this fact that it is Atal Pension Yojana from which the taxpayers have been barred. Now, why has the Ministry of Finance done that? First of all, the reason is that Atal Pension Yojana was primarily launched for the unorganized sector, the people who earn less than uh, your 5 lakh or 2.5 lakh is the limit of the tax, okay, income tax. So, if the person is earning below 2.5 lakh rupees, per year or the taxable limit, then that person is not eligible, uh, sorry, that person is eligible for the Atal Pension Yojana and if a person is earning more than the taxable limit and the person is paying the tax, that means that the person is uh, in a good financial position and is in a position to secure his own future. Therefore, the Atal Pension Yojana has been secured for the people who are not able to do that for the poor people who are earning uh, an income which is which is less than the income tax slab limit okay so this subtle pension yojana was launched in 2015 do remember june 1st 2015 ko ye launch hui thi okay and the purpose of it is to give the old age income security to the unorganized sector in the form of the monthly minimum assured pension which ranges from 1000 to rupees 5000 per month and it is purely based on the contribution made by the individual and prior to this announcement everyone of between 18 to 40 years was allowed to open an adult pension account but now the taxpayers who are paying the tax okay they would not be allowed obviously we are not counting here the people who pay nil income tax okay the zero income taxpayers would not be a part of this. They can uh, enroll in the Atal Pension Yojana. We are talking about the people who are able to pay their tax and who are actually paying their tax because the intention of the government is to secure the future of the unorganized workers or the people who lack financial awareness. Okay, So that is the basic idea. Now understand this point that the ban will be implied from October 1st, 2022. So do remember this date as well from October 1st, 2022, this news or this action uh, will be implemented. Now guys, I hope that all the schemes which are there in the news, you are covering them from the government schemes document also because do remember this fact that whenever a scheme comes in the news, it is your responsibility to cover it uh, entirely because it, anything from the scheme can be asked from you. Okay, so the next question is which state un uh, union territory has launched the Umid marketplace under the Afsar scheme of the airport authority of India? So here Jammu and Kashmir is the right answer. Now, Afsar, what is the full form of Afsar? Airports as venues for skilled artisans of the region. So what is the basic idea of this scheme? The basic idea is to provide a space to the artisans on the airports so that they can display their products and obviously on the airports we see uh, many tourists coming in uh, coming in the space or in the city or in the country uh, itself so when they get exposure to the rich craft to the rich uh, handicraft and the products that we have the artisan uh, products then obviously it will be a boost to our products only so that is the basic idea now can any one of you tell me that what is the space? There is a specification given by the Airports Authority of India that this much 
space would be allotted to the artisans to display their uh, products to basically set up an exhibition or you can say a kind of temporary shop within the uh, premise of your airport. So it is your task to tell me the space which has been uh, prescribed by the Airports Authority of India under the officer scheme. Now coming back to this news, so at the Srinagar International Airport, this Umid marketplace has been established. Now here two facts are important. That first is Umid marketplace and the name of the airport, Srinagar International Airport. Now apart from these two keywords, we have two more keywords in the same sentence. First is this Jammu Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha and second is the officer scheme of the Airport Authority of India under which this Umid marketplace has been established on the Srinagar International Airport. Okay. A similar marketplace was also opened at the Jammu Airport and both the outlets will exhibit the products of all the 20 districts. Okay. An initiative, uh, this initiative basically aims to support the local art and artisans of the self-help groups of Jammu Kashmir Rural Livelihood Mission, not a very important uh, statement to remember. It's just the basic concept. Why have they launched this Umid marketplace? And uh, this is also the conceptual part of this news. You can read it on your own. I have already explained the basic purpose of the news itself. Okay. Now I have a question from all of you. I hope you are aware that Jammu Kashmir's Delimitation Commission has recommended certain assembly seats for the Union Territory, for Jammu and Kashmir. You have to tell me how many assembly seats have been recommended by the Delimitation Commission and the Chairperson of the Delimitation Commission. These two are your questions. Do mention it in the comment section below. Moving ahead. Which IIT has signed an MOU with the Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited to collaborate on research and development and manufacturing and supplying components, sub-assemblies and systems for India's defense and aerospace sector? So here IIT Kanpur is the right answer. Now it is nothing uh, much. It's just that a collaboration has taken place between the Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited and IIT Kanpur for uh, for doing the research and development in these areas, okay, in basically defense and aerospace sector. So don't try to uh, remember these facts, okay. These are just for your information so that you can understand the basic premise of this MOU. Otherwise, you just need to remember three keywords here. IIT Kanpur, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited and your R&D in defense and aerospace sector, okay? These are your keywords that you need to remember from this news, okay? Moving ahead, which country is planning to submit a written proposal to the UN to create a commission on world peace consisting of Pope Francis, the UN Secretary General and Indian PM, uh, Narendra Modi as its members? So here, the right answer is Mexico. Mexico's Prime Minister, uh, President basically, has uh, announced this thing that they are planning to write a re report or write a proposal to the UN to create a commission on the world peace and it is, I would say, a really big milestone for India's soft power that now Mexico is planning to create a commission on world peace and we are being placed on the sides of the people like Pope Francis and UN Secretary General. So this is a very big achievement. But do remember, it is just the planning. Okay. Now, right now, Mexico has not submitted the application to the UN. It is just in the news that they are planning to set up this commission for a tenure of five years. But again, resolution denge, then UN would approve it. So it is going to take a lot of time. And maybe since then, your examination would come and you can expect such a question in the examination. So you should be aware of this thing. Okay. Apart from this, there is nothing much in the news itself. It is just that our prime minister is here in the news. That's why it became all the more important. Okay. The next news is very, very important. 
so uh, what percentage of indian population holds the digital currency according to the un ceta so un ceta has recently released a new report and according to that report india's 7.3% people out of the total population of india 7.3% people hold digital currency okay this is a very i would say a big proportion of the population that which is holding the digital currency when imf ha and the world bank both of them have cautioned the countries against the cryptocurrencies and uh, there was an article in the newspaper in the live mint itself that which was stating the potential of the cryptocurrencies for the money laundering so when we have so much going on regarding the cryptocurrencies 7.3% of india's population and obviously these would be your rich people not the ordinary middle class or the lower middle class people so rich people are holding these much uh, uh, digital currencies that is a big thing to know for all of us i would not say that it is a big issue because many of the people are putting their faith into the cryptocurrencies we have one country which has uh, announced bitcoin as its legal tender do you know which country is it tell me in the comment section below if you know it okay coming back to this news so it has a very interesting name <coughs> all that glitters is <coughs> sorry so the name of the report is all that glitters is not gold the high cost of leaving cryptocurrencies unregulated this is the name of this report some days back ministry minister of finance nirmala sitaraman has also said that we need to uh, regulate cryptocurrencies and there are high chances that rbi would ban cryptocurrencies however that was just the you can say stipulation that minister of finance had given as of now we haven't had any word from rbi regarding the banning of cryptocurrency okay but yes at the same time cryptocurrencies are not legal in, legal in india as well okay so what this report says it says that 7.3% of india's population is holding the digital currency and because of this proportion of people we stand at the seventh position in the world in terms of the digital currency holders which country is at the top it is ukraine ukraine uh, people uh, ukraine has 12.7% of its people holding digital currencies then we have russia venezuela singapore kenya us and india okay the next question is recently rear admiral um, guillermo pablo rios has been appointed as the head of the mission and chief military observer for the united nations military observer group in india and pakistan which country does rios belong to so rios belong to argentina option a is the right answer and this is the person so he has been appointed by un secretary general as the head of the mission and chief military observer for the united nations military observer group in india and pakistan so we have such kind of a group which was created in january 1948 so you all uh, should be aware of this fact that this was the time when we just had partition so after the partition this group came into being and since then this group is in its existence and right now this person has been appointed as a head of this uh, group okay so here three facts are important that you need to pay attention to first is the name of this person guillermo pablo rios from argentina second is the name of this group united nation military observer group in india and pakistan and third is this the date of this group's formation okay but that is all next question is who has been awarded the indian council uh, for cultural relations distinguished indologist for 2021 award so that is the award that has been given to jeffrey armstrong a canadian so he is this person he is very eminent or i would say a prominent personality in the field of yoga 
okay and right now this person has been give, has been given this distinguished indologist recognition by the indian council for cultural relations now why has he been given this award because of his you can say because of promoting indian culture in canada he has been given this award so that is all to this news nothing much is there and obviously you don't have to remember the reason because that won't be asked two facts are here that you need to remember first the name of this person and second the award that is iccr distinguished indologist 2021 so here guys i hope you have enjoyed the video now i'm going to leave you all for celebrating the independence day do celebrate it it is the 75th year of our independence thank you so much for watching this video goodbye and a very happy independence day again